Hi, I'm Jackie McLaughlin, CEO of React Tech Limited. The following video is aimed at giving you real use insight into the power of the React Tech Analytics software, which assimilates and interrogates the data collected by React Tech sensor technologies, such as hardware. We believe that armed with real use data of what's happening on the ground, you will be able to identify and improve your controls quicker and more effectively. And this way we believe you will be able to protect the health and well-being of your employees and engineer out risk. Basic knowledge of Reactics have monitoring technology is assumed within the content of this video. In particular, the way in which hardware will assess exposure to hand-arm vibration using a fixed vibration or assumed vibration magnitude for a tool, which we refer to as TEP, and also hardware's ability to have a real use assessment of the vibration from a tool, which we refer to as SEP. If more details are required on these particular terminologies and the science behind it, there's a companion video which you should watch in advance of watching this particular video and you'll be able to find that on our website. We will now walk you through some real use examples of how to use the React Tech Analytics software. Firstly, we will look at an environment of grounds maintenance. We will show you how to identify the most at risk employees and what is driving their risk, allowing you to understand whether perhaps there is more training needed or if they're simply using the wrong tools for the task. In the same context, we will then look at across all of the employees in this, this same environment, what are the tools driving the highest overall risk? And what is the difference between the assumed risk for those tools and the real use data? We will then give you some insight into how to validate which is actually the more appropriate risk for what the employees are facing. We will then look at data from a very different industry, motor vehicle repair. We will once again show the highest risk individuals and then we will show an example of identifying a tool which is very much in need of some maintenance or repair. And finally, we will look at a civil engineering type business and show how they have effectively reduced the overall risk of their entire workforce by around 33%. A series of administrative and engineering controls have been developed from the data and allowed the company to show a demonstrable improvement in the risk level of their overall workforce. At Reactic, we like to think that we help forward thinking companies switch from being mitigators of workplace health risk to being preventors. Whether you're a client or someone investigating our approach to prevention engineering, I hope you find the following video useful. So in this first example, we're going to look at where you can identify a high risk individual. So in each example, we'll start by um, illustrating how you access the information when logged into the React Tech Analytics platform. So you would log into the analytics um, by way of the web link and your username and password. If any time the username or password is forgotten, uh, there's a button to click to have that information sent to you. Once logged into the analytics for this particular example, you access the Haves drop-down box uh, in the main toolbar. And from the Haves, drop down box, you're looking for operator average exposure. The operator average exposure report has the following format on the left hand side of the screen. So you will see a list of employees. Uh, in this particular example, we have highlighted one individual. Um, so for that individual, you will see first of all the days monitored. So it will be the days monitored in uh, the current 
period. So the period is set up here is 12 months. Within that current period, this individual has been monitored for 76 days. The period prior to that, he was monitored for 15 days. His average daily exposure within the current period, based on TEP, is 27 points. And based on the sensed real-time exposure, it's 102 points. And this is what brought our attention to this individual as needing some investigation. With a risk level of 27 points, it's obviously low uh, and of no great concern. With a risk of 102 points, uh, the HSC or the, the, reg the ISO regulations would suggest that the individual had a 10% probability of developing halves within 12 years. It would also mean that control measures are required and that the individual should be uh, on occupational health uh, screening uh, program. So why, however, why is it also so different between TEP and SEP? In terms of his, how he would be notified on his device, according to the TEP which was on his display, there was only three days in which he exceeded the action value. So for the individual, for the majority of the time, he would have perceived himself to be in a low risk environment. But the sensed exposure points obviously paints a different picture. So this is the left-hand side of the operator average exposure table. On the right-hand side of that same table, there's this additional information and a blue action button called total. By pressing total, you will see a report of all the tools that the individual has used to develop this average exposure. If you press by day, you would see the information on a day-by-day -day basis. So in pressing total, you'll see over the period that the individual was monitored, all of the tools that he has used aggregated for the use of each tool, with the tools used most at the top of the list. So during the last 12 months, the individual was monitored for 76 days. In that uh, numbers and vibration magnitude. This is the data that was programmed in the tool tag and is the expected vibration magnitude that the duty holder would expect from the use of that tool. The blue number is the real use vibration magnitude sensed by the hardware. And in using the tools in the way that he has over that 76 day period, you'll see the total number of exposure points based on the tag vibration value versus the sense vibration value. Now by addressing the tools at the top of the list for this individual, uh, as you can see he's used a number of tools over the 76 days, but by addressing the risk from the tools at the top of the list, then you would be in a position to be addressing his highest risk drivers and therefore most efficiently reducing the risk experienced by that individual. So to identify his use of these particular tools uh, and why perhaps the vibration magnitude may vary, we can look further into the use of the tools by going to the tool menu within uh, the top menus available uh, in the React Tech Analytics. So under tools, uh, there is a, a drop down menu to tool vibration trends. And within tool vibration trends, you will see the use of that tool over all time. So having dropped down the tool vibration trends, uh, there is a long, long list of all of the tools available uh, within that particular group or within that particular company. So when trying to search a particular tool used by an individual, uh, the general Microsoft Control F search uh, capability can be used and then if you enter the tool ID that you are looking for in this case TID 152 this will be highlighted and then basically along on the right hand side by clicking operators you will see everyone that's used that same tool and what sort of differing information you have across the operators. So having done this in this particular tool and trying to search for our individual that we have been looking for, um, what we find is that he has been a particularly heavy user, user of this tool 
um, with 11 and a half hours with that high vibration magnitude relative to the tool tag value of 3.3. Well, you can see a list of all the other people who have used that same tool, some for differing times, but this other particular individual here has used the same tool for a very uh, long uh, usage as well. Um, and what you can see is his vibration magnitude is significantly less than that of Joe Bloch's. And also his vibration magnitude at 3.8 is very similar to what the duty holder would expect for the tool. So this again emphasizes a potential issue with an individual as opposed to an individual with the tool. Or uh, sorry, as opposed to a, a, an issue with the tool. So the tool can have a vibration magnitude as expected by the duty holder, but this particular individual who is a high user of that tool has had consistently a particularly high vibration magnitude. So it's very much training that is required for dual blobs in this particular example. I'll move on to a different example now where we will start by looking for tools that are driving high risk. So this example starts again with the halves drop down menu from the top uh, menu bar. From the halves drop down menu, we're looking for top tool exposure. So have clicked, having clicked on top tool exposure, you will then see a list, um, a list of tools and the vibration magnitude and operators have used those tools over all of the period that you're looking at. So in this instance here, um, we are covering uh, this particular group over a 12 month period uh, and use, looking at TEP only data at this point. So you see the total uh, trigger time of use of the tools or average daily points, uh, average daily points and the vibration magnitude information. I can sort this by the total exposure points and all reports in this manner can be sorted by clicking the column heading. I can also uh, click on the column heading of average daily operator points, which will give you an idea of tools that are used uh, most often, but also tools that are giving high uh, vibration exposure levels almost every time they're used. So in the case of that I'm looking at here, uh, this particular lawnmower, of which there are several model types, is at the high is at the top end of the total points for this particular group, but also is at the high end of provide uh, of creating average daily operator points as well. So it means it's a tool that's consistently used and used most days to a high level. I want to look a bit further at that particular tool. So I'll look at the top tool exposure again. But this time I'll click on both TEP and SEP being displayed. It creates a more complex report because there's more information. Um, but I did, and it's why it's worth doing, first of all, with only one of either TEP or SEP being looked at. So again, I've sorted it to be able to see that the top two uh, in terms of total points of exposure is this particular lawnmower. Um, and we've seen very consistently, well, the uh, duty holder has suggested the vibration magnitude should be four meters per second squared. Over all four examples, we're seeing a vibration magnitude that is higher than four meters per second squared. Um, so this would be an example since it's used so frequently where it might be worth doing some tool testing to have confidence that the SEP data is valid. Because if it is valid, then the average exposure in using this tool is at a dangerously high level, while the duty holder is believing it's a lower level and the employees are also being controlled to that level. So this is a tool where Reactic were involved in doing some vibration measurements. So the vibration measurements were using a reference instrument in compliance to ISO 5349 and ISO 8041. Uh, what you're seeing in the same table here is for the first set of tests where there were three one minute tests taken on the reference instrument. Uh, the hardware data uh, was actually only one figure, uh, which is 6.7, versus the reference instrument averaging over the three one minute tests was 5.8. 
another set of tests were, were carried out where the halfware was broken into three individual measurements. So in, in this occasion, the reference instrument measured 5.6 and the hardware measured 5.6. So you can see it's very, very consistent with the vibration magnitude range um, as, I, as, as determined by using a reference instrument. And it would certainly indicate that the current tag value that's being used in the TE beta, TEP beta is too low at four meters per second squared. Now, if I go, just go back to the previous slide, you can see that we were uh, recording readings as high as nine, um, so 7.5 to 9.2 meters per second squared. The HSC would advise that a hand-guided mower could be between three and eight meters per second squared, and it's very much impacted by the force of push and also the type of grass that's being used. The tool testing was carried out on short grass, so it would suggest that the higher readings seen in the previous slide um, were realistic for long grass cutting. Um, all in all, suggesting the SCP data is very valid and, the H and that the duty holder has work to do here to reduce the risk of their employees. But if they do so, it will have material risk on a large group of employees such as because it's such a commonly used tool. In this next example here, we're going to look at prioritizing tool testing over a range of tools. So we're again looking at the top uh, exposure, at the top tool exposure report, um, but it's for a different group of people, uh, a group of arborists. Um, and again, what we're trying to highlight by looking at the top tool exposure is what are the tools that are used most frequently and therefore, if we can concentrate our efforts on those tools, uh, then we can again, again hopefully address um, where we can reduce the risk most materially. So in this example here, there were four different types of tool identified from the top five in that list. Uh, again, tool testing was carried out to first of all, give confidence uh, in, to the duty holder of the, the validity of the SEP real use data. Um, now, the four tool types that we uh, chose here covered 51% of the risk from the entire data set. If actually we looked at another three tools, it would cover 70% of the, the data set. So, again, you can see it's quite easy to uh, ident identify a small, small number of tools which will impact greatly the accuracy with which your risk assessments uh, may be carried out. So in all of this data here, the reference instrument is shown in blue, the hardware is shown in red, uh, well, where the duty holder's tag value is in yellow. So in the case of the pole, the pole chainsaw here, um, the, the three values are of the order of magnitude, are of the same order of magnitude, with uh, the sense value from hardware being slightly most conservative. Uh, in the case of the chainsaw, the, uh, the chainsaws, on both chainsaws, the duty holder tag value is under assessing the risk, uh, whereas hardware is the right order of magnitude. And it's only actually in the strimmer the hardware uh, value is slightly low, but it's not as low as the value that's being used for the duty holder. So in all cases, by relying on SEP, uh, the duty holder would be able to manage the risk of their employees more conservatively than their current view, and in general, in the right order of magnitude as compared with the reference instrument taking measurements to ISO 5349. I'm going to move on to a completely different type of example now. Um, and we're looking at an in the industry of mo motor vehicle repair, which has been identified by the HSC as a particularly high risk environment. Uh, this is some data that was uh, delivered by uh, an HSC inspector uh, who specialised in hand arm vibration. And of, of note, the most important statistic is perhaps that in body shop repair, which is one of the highest risk environments within motor vehicle repair, almost one in a thousand people, uh, there is new cases of uh, hand arm vibration each year. So it accounts for 
10% of all reported ridders, despite not being a, a, a employment sector that employs um, the highest number of people. So it is a, a high risk sector, uh, according to the HSE. So in our use of ReactX equipment within this sector, we're going to explore some of the data that was found. Following logging into the ReactTech analytics, the opening uh, view is what we call the dashboard. And the dashboard is intended to give you an overview of performance over a particular period of time. So in this motor vehicle repair environment, we are looking at a data set where the product was used, uh, and that, that's the timeline that was filtered for. The pie cart pie chart gives you an immediate impression of whether the risk as assessed by the tag exposure versus the real use sensed exposure is of a similar level. Um, and this chart would indicate that uh, the sense vibration uh, is assessing a risk to be somewhat higher than that from the tag values. In this particular example, the duty holder um, split their data set between employees employed within the body shop environment versus those within the workshop environment to allow him to assess the risk between the two. Uh, and in the uh, leak table at the bottom of the dashboard, you can see the performance of the two groups side by side. So essentially what we're seeing here uh, in terms of overall workforce average um, for the body shop environment, the risk according to the, the tag values used by the duty holder is about 40 points per day and that's similar to the workshop whereas the sense vibration value would suggest that the body shop had a materially higher risk uh, than the duty holder expects but also materially higher risk than the workshop and if you look at it in terms of the highest individual levels you can see that there's a, a very large uh, gap or a difference between the highest risk individual and the overall group, which again sort of um, reflects the sort of information that we're seeing in the utilities example that we showed at the very beginning of this seminar, where one individual materially exceeded the risk of all his uh, colleagues. Again, this the data suggests that this is happening in the real environment of this particular um, company. Um, and again, by the highest risk individual, you would see very much that the body shop is a higher risk environment, and that is reflected in the HSC statistics on ridders. So to try and see what's driving, again, the highest risks, um, we'll look at, again, first of all, by the operator average exposure. So on the, the top menu, the halves drop down, operator average exposure will take us to a view of this nature where you're looking at particular individuals. Uh, in this data set, individuals were anonymized with identities, um, but they were unique. So A13 was a particular individual. So having seen that this individual had a particularly large difference between his TEP and SEP data, uh, by clicking on the total uh, icon to the right, we'll get we will see all of the tools used by this particular individual. So the individual, uh, in all his use over uh, the days that he was monitored, uh, the TEP totaled 302 points, whereas SEP was almost 2,500, giving him a daily average of 25 versus 144. And that data was absolutely dominated by one particular tool, uh, an air palm sander uh, where his vibration magnitude as picked up with the hardware uh, was around about eight meters per second squared versus three and that makes a massive difference in terms of its exposure points and um, so that particular tool was about 95 percent of his overall data so obviously his use of that tool if that can be addressed would make a massive difference to that particular individual's risk so first of all, we want to have a look at whether or not that individual's use of that tool is um, the issue or it's the tool itself that is the issue. So to find out about the broader use of that particular the tool, again, we'll look at the halves menu and in the drop down 
uh, menu under tools, rather we will look at tool vibration trends. So not the house menu, the tools menu, we'll look at tool vibration trends. So in looking at tool vibration trends, you'll see um, a list of every tool. Uh, now this report gives you over a two year period, so we don't select the, the, the tool, the date range, it gives you it for two years. Um, and again, if you use the Microsoft Control F functionality to search for the tool ID of interest, it results, you find the tool that you're looking for, and you're sure that's the tool that you're looking for, by clicking on operators, you'll see the data from all operators who've used that particular tool. So in this particular example, it was an air palm sander. Um, the operator that we were looking for is A13. You will see that other people have used the same tool, albeit the A13 has used it most of the three people that have used that particular tool. But his use of that tool is higher than his colleagues. So the lowest level was achieved by um, A11, and he achieved a, a vibration magnitude around about five meters per second squared versus the eight of A13. Uh, now that is significant, five meters per second squared is equivalent to about 50 points per hour, whereas eight, eight meters per second squared is equivalent to 128 points per hour. So again, that, even that difference is material. So while the duty holder may have to look at his assumed vibration magnitude for this particular tool, there is also evidence that A13's use of it is riskier than others. So we should be looking at how A13 is using the tool. And in the case of Sanders, that could be about pressure and applying excess force, or it can be used a, a it can be about using inappropriate abrasives or abrasives, uh, using abrasives for too long and not changing them often enough because they're worn. Moving on to another example, and this comes from the world of utilities. Um, in this particular example, we are focusing on tools again. So from the halves, drop down box, we are looking at top tool exposure to find out which tools are driving the most exposure for this particular utilities organization. So having selected sort by um, top tool exposure, if you sort by total exposure points, you see the tools at the top driving most exposure risk uh, for the, the data set. In this particular example, a particular tool, the uh, core drill, appeared at the top. So to look at this particular tool more broadly, we sorted by model number. Again, any of the reports, uh, the column headings can be used to change what you sort by. So in sorting by model number, we see together all of the MAG5 codes used across the data set. And I've highlighted two particular examples of this code drill, uh, where it, for both, um, or the reason for selecting them is they are at the extremes of what we're looking at. So one has a very high sense vibration magnitude relative to the, the, the TEP data or the the tool type vibration, so one has a very high sense vibration magnitude, and the other one has a vibration magnitude which is more consistent with the sense data. It gives a massive difference to the exposure points, uh, and both have been used for several hours, so it's a, a reasonably comparable data set. So that's us trying to compare similar models, which are important products in terms of the overall risk of the data set. So to compare these tools in a little bit more detail, again, we'll look at uh, from the halves drop down box, or rather from the tool drop down box, we're going to look at tool vibration trends. And within tool vibration trends, we're going to sort by model number again to see all of this similar tool together lined up. And um, so we're seeing a very consistent vibration magnitude as um, programmed in the tool tags. But in the data set here, we're seeing a wide range of vibration magnitude between all of the tools of this type. 
So again, highlighting on the two that we identified before, where one's at the lower end of the extreme and one's at the higher end, we'll now, on press, we'll now press the blue operator uh, box to see a little bit more detail on who has used these two tool sets. Now, what we see here is that consistently between the two tools, there are more than one operator using the tools, um, but there's a consistency in the tool vibration magnitude across operators. So very high in the case of the high tool and very modest in the case of the modest tool. So there, this would indicate that either the tool itself or the use of the tool by these two different groups are leading to this very different um, risk levels. And then again, by understanding why, there's an ability to control that risk in a much better way than it has been. So I'll end this seminar on the best use of React Tech's smart monitoring technology but by taking you to a very different example whereby a civil engineering firm choose to try and manage their uh, exposure of their workforce by the use of an administrative administrative control whereby they reduce the exposure limit value on the alerts and alarms being provided to the tool users from 400 points to 300 points, essentially meaning that as they did their work, they would be alerted um, earlier in the working day as to when they needed to stop. And that's not to say that in every day they work to those extremes, but by bringing down that level, it brought down a keener awareness of what is, what is a, a safe level of work and what is not. So the duty holder uh, had been a user of ReactX technology to 2016, but in a very modest way. In 2017, they expanded their use as shown here by the monitor days, but it was not until 2018 that it was broadly deployed within their workforce, so some 26,500 days of coverage in 2018. And it was at the very beginning of 2019 that they took the action to reduce the limit value from 400 points to 300 points again, meaning that the operators, while they carried out their work, would be alerted more early to time to stop what they're doing. So as a consequence of this, when you compare 2018 to 2019 from the data that is reported within the React Tech analytics and its dashboard and other reports, we were able to see that for a very similar amount of data, so 26,500 versus just shy of 25,500 days between the two years, uh, a, a group of employees of 766 in 2018 compared with 690 in 2019. But the number of days where the limit value was exceeded went down from 140 to 123, which was a very significant reduction in percentage from over 0.5% to below 0.5%. But so did the, the days where the amount of exposure exceeded the action value that went down from essentially 13.8% of days monitored to only 8.5% of days monitored. And the overall average daily exposure for the workforce had a very material reduction of a third from 45 to 30 days. And here we see the sort of graphics again in terms of average exposure, showing the average exposure down through the days um, and showing Graphically here, 2018 compared to 2019, the distinctly lower level of times when the action value were exceeded. And again, here's some of the detail of where that data uh, was, was seen. And that's all within the dashboard reporting of the React Tech Analytics. So as I say, a very different example, all based on looking purely at the TEP, um, as that is the data that is used in the monitors uh, as the operators see while they go about their working day, but simply by making an adjustment to when the individuals were alerted, a much a marked reduction in the overall workforce exposure uh, levels seen by this organization. 
So that brings us to the end of this seminar. Um, hopefully you will find it useful to have seen some examples of how to identify the operators who have particular use of tools, which indicates that they have issues and that their um, use of the tool needs to be addressed, whether by training or some other means. Um, alternatively, by focusing on the tools, how you can see the tools that are driving the greatest risks, which, pro which potentially also helps you identify the tools, which are maybe the wrong tools being used for that particular activity. Um, and also it can allow you to prioritize tool testing uh, and potentially save costs uh, where tools are tested perhaps unnecessarily. And lastly, uh, an example of where a company has used just a simple administrative control uh, by way of the system to dramatically reduce the overall risk of their organization.